Hello everyone, I hope you are learning well. In this video, we will see how to find out the planar density for BCC planes. Now, uh, these are the three planes whose planar density we will be finding out. BCC is body centered cubic structure. Uh, a cubic structure, it has a cubic unit cell that has an additional atom at its body centered point other than the atoms located at the corner of the uh, unit cell. Okay, structure looks like that. Okay, if you draw it first. Before finding out the planar density uh, for each of these planes, you should know what uh, the lattice looks like, what the unit cell looks like, for example. Okay, so this is a cubic unit cell that has a lattice parameter A. All right, uh, this length from one corner to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction. These are the axis directions. Okay, these are the axis directions, and all these uh, lengths from one corner to another corner will be A. But this from this corner to another uh, to this corner will not be a because this is not parallel to either x y or z axis okay so only those lengths which are from one corner to another corner along the axis direction will be a so let its parameter is a and uh, there will be some atoms making up the unit cell okay let these atom be represented by these spheres these are spherical in nature in theory and they have some particular radius capital r okay let that particular radius is capital R and all of these atoms are similar in our theory so these are the corner atoms you know all right so this is a cubic uh, structure and for BCC for it to become BCC there will be additional atom at the body center point it, it will be like at the center most point here and keep that in so for BCC uh, lattice inside work you should know that uh, the uh, relationship between atomic radius capital R and the lattice parameter A is as I found here you can find out the link to its complete derivation in description box so here is the relationship and that would be potentially used to express the planar density in terms of atomic radius also okay so let's get started with finding out the planar density for 100 plane as we have seen uh, the BCC structure now, we will uh, mention the formula that we will use to find out the planar density. Let us denote it with uh, sigma. So, uh, sigma equals capital N by A, okay, where capital N means net number of atom centered on the <laughs> area of the plane. All right, and this is the main formula that we'll use, and this is a general formula, okay, that can be used for any kind of lattice. It will be used for FCC, BCC, SC, and any other uh, lattice you are considering. The formula will be same. Now let's start with the first simple uh, plane, which is 100 plane. These are the miller indices of the plane, and we need to first draw the plane from these miller indices in order to find out its planar density in a BCC structure. So this corresponds to x, this corresponds to y, and this corresponds to z. For drawing the plane, we need to take the inverses of these three uh, Miller indices, and it will give us the inverse of one is one, the inverse of uh, y is in, uh, the inverse of zero is infinity, the inverse of zero for z is infinity again. Okay. So uh, I hope you know the steps uh, to find uh, to draw the plane from given Miller indices. So this is the back face. And this is the front one. We'll first draw the plane, and after that, we'll find out these parameters for the uh, plane. So for x, this is the origin. Okay, if all the Miller indices are positive, then this is the origin that you'll be taking. Uh, this is z-axis, this is x-axis, and this is y-axis. In case of planes, the Miller indices represents the intercepts okay intercepts are the particular points along the axis on the axis lines so uh, this is one the non infinity one will be considered first so as these two are infinity so first consider this one this is one one points mean to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction since it is x direction so this is the point the other corner of the unit cell along the x direction is this one point so this is the point one Okay, this is point one. That's the intercept. And since the other two are infinity, from this single point, draw the parallel lines um, from this point along y direction first. Okay, from this point along y direction, which is this direction. Okay, this direction is y parallel from this point parallel to y direction, which is one, which is this. Okay. And from this point, since z is also infinity, draw parallel line 
and also from this point along z because we are uh, interested in making uh, it to look like a plane and it will be drawn that way from this point we uh, draw uh, the line parallel to y axis first okay and from this point now there are two points that we got this point and this point from these two points we'll draw a parallel line uh, along z direction and we'll join these two lines together okay so this is the plane this one side uh, the front side of the cube now we have uh, successfully drawn the plane now we need to find out the net number of atoms that are centered on the plane and area of the plane okay now for area of the plane as far as the area of the plane is considered because it is more simple to find out so area of the plane is for a shape like that which is a square okay how it's a square because this length from one uh, corner of the unit cell to the other corner of the unit cell along the axis direction these are the axis these this direction is axis direction and this length is also along the axis direction from one corner to another corner it's a this length is a also this length is a also this length is a also it's a square and formula for area of the square is length into width which is a into a which makes a square okay so the, this is the area of the plane 100 zero, zero. okay next we need to find out the net number of atoms in case of uh, planes the atoms contribution to the plane needs to be calculated because not the whole atom uh, is necessarily lying on the plane okay for finding out this uh, atoms contribution to the plane uh, we need to see that what portion of atoms cross section cross sectional uh, area which is a circle okay is lying uh, inside the plane okay atoms cross section area which is circle is considered there is a circle right there there is a circle right there there is a circle right here and there is a circle right here okay and you can see that this is the plane this shaded region is the plane and you can see here that not all of the atoms part is lying inside the plane this portion of the uh, atom is lying outside the uh, plane okay it's not uh, lying inside the plane so that portion is not a part of the plane okay only a small only some of the part of the uh, atom is lying or centered on the plane and how we'll be finding out this portion of the atom um, numerically uh, so that we can write a number instead of uh, the n value okay the method is simple so what will be the uh, method what will be the uh, procedure that we have to follow in order to find out the portion of atom that is lying inside the plane the procedure that i'm going to tell you will be similar for all the cases that you'll study for bcc for fcc and all okay and for finding out the atoms contribution to this um, to the plane first you need to find out the angle between the uh, two lines at each corner of the plane okay here is the corner and these are the two lines the angle between these two lines needs to be uh, determined okay these uh, the angle between these two lines the angle between these two lines and the angle between these two lines okay and we can see here since it is a cubic structure okay and the plane is also lying perfectly uh, on the wall of the cubic unit cell and you can see here this is a 90 degree angle here okay for cubic structure you know that these two uh, this angle is 90 degree for each of these sides okay so the angle we have got here is 90 degree okay next one what you have to do is divide this since this is similar okay this angle is similar for all of the atoms so divide this each angle with the total angle of the circle which is 360 degree okay the total angle of the atom is 360 degree atom circle okay divided with the total angle of the atom which is 360 and you will get the atoms contribution each atoms contribution to the um, plane in that way okay and because um, in principle you have to do it separately for all of the atoms and and add it up because it's 90 degree for each of the atom 
okay at each of the corner this is 90 degree this is 90 degree this is 90 degree and this is 90 degree uh, for this atoms contribution to the plane you have to draw uh, divide this angle 90 degree with the total angle which is 90 by uh, 360 it will give you 1 over 4 answer this will give you 1 over 4 answer also this will give you 1 over 4 answer also this will give you 1 over 4 also okay since all these angles were common it's not necessary that all of these angles are uh, similar but just in case they are similar you don't have to don't have to find it separately for all of the atoms if the angles are similar okay so 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 will give you the total uh, atomic contribution to the plane okay and it is 4 by 4 which makes 1 all right so uh, it's 1 and the value of n is known now and we can find out the planar density of 100 plane which will become 1 over a square in terms of lattice parameter now as we know that the relationship between a and atomic radius capital r is this so we can put the value of a right there and on solving it it will become 3 by 16 r square as the value for planar density in terms of the atomic radius capital R in units of atoms per meter square all right if you put the value of a in SI units after removing the prefix in all all right I hope the method is clear to you all first of all we have to draw the plane okay secondly we need to find out the area of the plane okay uh, depending upon the geometry of the plane if it is square in shape uh, then you will use this formula length into width it's uh, if it is triangular in shape you will use the formula 1 over 2 height into base okay and all uh, depending upon the shape of the uh, plane you will find out the area of the plane okay as you will see for 1 1 1 the shape will be triangular and the method will be slightly different and uh, yeah and uh, after finding out the area of the plane you will find out the net number of uh, atoms that are contributing to the plane okay and this could be found using this general uh, procedure okay that will be applicable for all kind of planes for all kind of lattices and for all kind of planes you first need to find out the angle between the two lines uh, making up the plane at each of the corner okay these are the four corners and we can know the angle between the two lines uh, is 90 degree at each of the corner in that specific plane in different planes the angle is different okay uh, so uh, it's 90 degree each and then you have to divide uh, this angle that we have got for each atom with the total angle of the uh, atoms cross section which is 360 degree okay after dividing you will get each atoms contribution to the plane and you will add up for all the atoms and you will get the net contribution and after getting these two values you will put this value these values into this expression and you will get the planar density for the specific uh, for the specific plane you are considering okay now we are going to find out the planar density for 110 plane so now it's time to find out the planar density for 110 plane in BCC structure and the first step is to draw the plane and for drawing the plane first of all uh, we'll take the inverse of each of the index here this is corresponding to x this is corresponding to y this is corresponding to z these inverses will give us the intercepts that will be used to draw the plane okay so the inverse of 1 is 1 the inverse of y is 1 the inverse of z is infinity okay so uh, now here is the uh, cube okay this is x direction this is y direction and this is z direction okay the first step in drawing the plane from given miller indices is to take the inverse of each of the index right there okay these inverses will give you the intercepts this is x intercept this is y intercept and this is the z intercept of the plane uh, under interest okay this is then under interest <laughs> i don't know if there is a word like that but uh, the plane we are interested in okay and since all of the uh, indices are positive that is why the origin for all positive miller indices is this one point okay now to draw the plane uh, this is one okay uh, one as x intercept which means one point and one point is obtained from moving or uh, from origin will move uh, in x direction to the other corner of the unit cell which is this point so this is the point one 
okay this is one of the point uh, of our plane now next point is y with 1 so from origin okay not from this point but from origin because we are talking about intercepts here and whenever you are talking about intercept each for each of the intercepts you'll move from origin okay separately so for x intercept we move from origin one unit along x okay and we reach this point and this is the point one which is one intercept for uh, x direction and this is one for y so we'll move from origin along y direction to the other corner of the unit cell which means one okay so this is the other uh, this is one of the other point uh, of the um, plane under study and since the z intercept is infinity we'll draw uh, parallel lines from each of the point that we have drawn here uh, along the z direction so from this point we'll uh, draw parallel line from uh, this point along z direction to the other corner of the unit cell okay so it is this line okay and this okay from this point also we'll draw the parallel line all right and we'll join these lines together these points together like that so this is the plan all right this is the plan and uh, now we'll draw the atoms that potentially lie uh, on this plane so there is an atom at this corner there is an atom at this corner atom at this corner atom at this corner and also an atom at the center point okay there are the other atoms also but all those atoms will lie outside of this plane they will not intersect the plane that is why i am not drawing them in order to avoid any kind of complications so uh, these are the atoms that potentially lie on the plane now uh, This is a rectangular shape. Okay, these two lengths are equal, and these two lengths are equal. This is a rectangular shape, and its area is simply uh, this length multiplied by this length. This length is a. Okay, this is equal to lattice parameter since it is parallel to z direction. So this length is a multiplied by uh, this length. Let this length be capital L, and we will find it out in a side work. Okay, uh, this is a diagonal length, and it makes a triangle like that. Okay. This length is a, this length is a, and this is the hypotenuse. So using the Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse square, which is L square here, equals base square, which is a here. This length is a, plus perpendicular square, which is, this is perpendicular and this is a again. So like that, it makes 2a square and taking under root on both sides, it gives under root 2a. Okay, so this is the length of this diagonal here. So the area will come out to be this, under root 2a square. All right, now we need to find out the net number of atoms that contributes to the plane. And as you can see here, this whole atom, okay, is lying on this plane. This whole atom. We'll talk about these atoms at the end. Let's first talk about this atom since the whole of the circle uh, is lying on the plane. Okay, that is why this atom's contribution to the plane will be considered as one. As the whole atom circle is lying on the plane, this whole circle, you can cross sectional uh, area of the atom is uh, intersected by this plane. Okay, that is why this atom's contribution to the plane will be 1. And this angle, angle between this line and this line is 90 degrees. Since you can see here, it is a rectangular shape and it is a, and in a rectangle, uh, the angle between the adjacent line is 90 degree also. So it's 90 degree here 90 degree here 90 degree here 90 degree here so dividing 90 okay uh, by the total angle of the circle which is 360 here we will get 1 over 4 okay so the net contribution will be 1 by this atom this central atom plus 1 by 4 by this atom 1 by 4 by this atom 1 by 4 by this atom plus 1 by 4 by this atom okay and it makes 1 plus 1 which is 2 all right i hope it's clear to you that it is a rectangular shape okay in a, rect in a rectangle uh, the angle between uh, this line and this line the adjacent lines okay at the corner uh, is 90 degrees okay the uh, same way as it was in a uh, previous plane so net number of atoms uh, are 2 okay now the planar density will be 2 divided by uh, under root 2 a square okay and uh, it's 2 to the power 1 here and 2 to the power 1 by 2 instead of under root we can write it as 2 to the power 1 by, uh, 1 by 2 and since the bases are same we can uh, solve the powers uh, since it is in a denominator it will come out uh, 
as minus 1 over 2 at the exponent of the numerator 2 okay uh, this is a power rule uh, exp exponent rule so on subtracting uh, 1 by 2 from 1 we'll get 1 over 2 by a square which we can write it as under 2 a uh, under 2 by uh, a square okay so this is the value of the planet density for uh, 110 plane okay and uh, as we know a equals 4 over under root 3 into capital r as the relationship between the atomic radius and the lattice parameter you can put right there uh, which will give you this expression and okay or you can solve it further like like that 3r square over under root 2 okay um, I did the same process so uh, under root 2 by 2 is equals to 1 over under root 2 okay as I did right there you can follow the same process right there also you will get it okay so uh, this is what we get as planet density for the 110 plane for BCC structure now we will find out uh, the planet density for 111 plane okay uh, so lastly we will find out the planet density for 111 plane and uh, first of all we draw the plane and we need to take the inverse of these three values that will give us again 1 okay after taking the inverse we got 111 and these are the x intercept this is the y intercept and this is the uh, this is the z intercept and now we'll draw the cube okay this is y direction this is z direction and this is the uh, sorry this is the x direction and this is the z direction okay and this is the all positive origin origin for all positive mill indices if all the mill indices are positive then this is the origin now we are going to uh, draw the intercepts and we'll join them together to find out the uh, to draw the plane in order to draw the plane so x intercept is one which means from origin we will move one unit along the x direction to the other corner of the unit cell which gives us this point okay this is one of the point on the plane and y intercept is one so from origin separately we will move one unit along y direction which will give us this point and for z intercept is one again so from origin separately we will move one unit along z direction to the other corner of the unit cell which means this point okay in drawing the planes we move uh, from origin separately for each of the intercept okay uh, for each of the axis uh, axis intercept will move separately uh, for x intercept will move from origin for y intercept we move from origin for z intercept will move from origin because uh, we are drawing the intercepts and intercepts are taken on the axis lines uh, which are directed from the origin in case of directions the procedure is different so we'll join these three points together okay after joining them together this is the plane that we got okay so before finding out the uh, area of this plane we will first find out the net number of atoms that lie on the plane uh, because uh, for finding out the area of the plane the, uh, the process is a bit lengthier not as much but uh, I just want to find out the net number of atoms first for this let me draw the atoms here is the first atom here's another atom and there is this is the last atom that lie on this plane this body centered atom is not lying on the plane okay it is lying below the plane okay it is not intersecting the plane that is why uh, the central atom is not uh, something that i'm going to draw because its uh, contribution to the plane is zero all right only these three atoms are contributing to the plane and what portion of them is contributing to the plane needs to be determined and for this we need to find out the angle between this line and this line which is not 90 here clearly okay since it is a triangular shape and in this time it's not a rectangular shape it's not a square shape uh, it's a uh, it's a triangular shape right there so uh, we need to determine the angle between these lines okay now the ang uh, the triangle that it is making is equilateral triangle Okay. equilateral triangle means the triangle which has all of its length equal to each other so how we know that because as you can see here the this length is a diagonal length this length is a diagonal length and this is a diagonal length also for each of the phase of the cube since all these lengths are equal since 
in a cube all the lengths are equal so the diagonal length will be equal to each other also okay so this phase has a diagonal this this phase has this diagonal and the bottom base uh, phase has this diagonal all of these diagonals are of equal length okay you can find out the length separately by using the pythagoras theorem you will find out that all these diagonals are of equal length okay it makes an equilateral triangle and in a triangle okay in a triangle uh, the total angle of a triangle is 180 degree okay and since uh, there are three sides of a triangle and since it's a equilateral triangle just in case of a equilateral triangle it's true we can divide uh, it by 3 and we'll get the angle at each corner of the triangle okay that is what is needed in order to find out the atoms contribution to the plane okay we ne first need to find out the angle between these two lines and for finding the angle between these two lines i'm using this geometry rule in which for equilateral triangle we can divide the total angle of the triangle which is 180 by the sides of the um shape which is 3 now after dividing what you will get 6 0 60 degree okay so here the angle is 60 degree here the angle is 60 degree between these two lines okay and here the angle is 60 degree also okay now we need to find out the atoms contribution to the plane and for this we will divide this angle which we got as 60 by the total angle of the circle which is 360 okay and we will get 1 over 6 all right for each of the atom you can do it separately for each of the atom because the angle here is 60 60 60 that is why the contribution will be similar also 1 by 6 by this atom 1 by 6 by this atom 1 by 6 by this atom so capital n will be 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 since there are three atoms so it's 3 by 6 and it's 1 by 2 okay so the net contribution of atoms to the plane is 1 by 2 All right. Now we need to find out the area of the plane, and since it's a triangle, so its area will be one over two into base multiplied by height. Now this is the base. Okay, this is the base, and uh, we'll find out the height later. First, find out the base length, which is uh, you as we have found it previously also. This length is under root two a. In case of one one zero plane, we uh, found its Length has under root two a using the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, that's clear already. Now we are going to find out the height, and for this, uh, for height, we'll draw a projection from this point uh, on the base, and on drawing the projection, this will end up at the point exactly at the middle of this whole line. Okay, this is the exact middle point uh, because it is an equilateral triangle. It will uh, lie just at the middle point. Okay, uh, so this is the height of the triangle that needs to be determined. Uh, okay and for this we'll use the distance formula we'll uh, write the coordinates of this point coordinates of this point and we will use the distance formula in order to find the height as it's the simplest way there are the other ways also you can also use the pythagoras theorem but uh, using the distance formula will be way easier um, now the co uh, coordinates of this point uh, is 0 0 1 okay from origin to reach that point what you have to do is move one unit along z axis and you will reach that point that is why it's one unit along z and zero units along x and y directions because none of the motion is required along the x and y direction to reach that point okay now from origin uh, to this point since it is lying at the base region that is why its z coordinate will be zero and x and y coordinates will be half in half because it's lying just at the middle of the uh, base region so it's half half and zero Okay, coordinates of this point is half, half, and zero. Coordinates of this point is zero, zero, one. All right. Now we'll use the distance formula for this. Uh, h equals under root x two minus x one whole square, y two minus y one whole square plus z two minus z one whole square, and uh, the lattice parameter comes outside of the uh, under root. Okay, the lattice parameter since it's a, that is why it's lying here. Uh, we'll multiply it with the whole uh, thing that comes out after putting the values. Now uh, let this is one of the point, and this is the another point. Okay, let it be x one, y one, and z one. Let it be x two, y two, and z two. Okay, uh, this notation is arbitrary. You can name it as x two, y two, and z two, or vice versa. It's not important. Now we'll put the value right there, and it's. One by two minus zero whole square plus one by two minus zero whole square plus uh, zero minus one whole square. What we'll get is one by two whole square means one over four plus one over four plus one. Okay, and it's two 
टू बाई फोर प्लस वन एंड ए इंटू वन बाई टू प्लस वन विच मीन्स थ्री बाई टू अंडर रूट थ्री बाई टू और वी कैन राइट एज ए अंडर रूट थ्री बाई अंडर रूट टू सो दिस इज द हाइट ऑफ द ट्राइंगल नाउ द एरिया ऑफ द ट्राइंगल इज वन ओवर टू इंटू बेस इंटू हाइट वन ओवर टू बेस इज अंडर रूट टू ए हाइट इज ए इंटू अंडर रूट थ्री बाई अंडर रूट टू ओके अंडर रूट टू अंडर रूट टू कैंसल्स आउट एंड वी गेट ए स्क्वेयर अंडर रूट थ्री बाई टू सो दिस इज द एरिया ऑफ द प्लान ओके नाउ नेक्स्ट ऑन वी हैव टू डिवाइड द नेट नंबर ऑफ आइटम दैट वी गॉट एज वन ओवर टू फॉर द प्लान डिवाइडेड बाई ए स्क्वेयर अंडर रूट थ्री बाई टू दैट कम्स एट द न्यूमरेटर सो दैट दिस टू एंड टू कैंसल्स आउट एंड वट वी गेट इज वन ओवर अंडर रूट थ्री ए स्क्वेयर सिगमा ओके एंड यू नो ऑल्सो दैट ए इज इक्वल टू फोर बाई अंडर रूट थ्री कैपिटल आर सो विल पुट द वैल्यू ऑफ ए राइट देयर लेट एस टेक इन स्क्वेयर फर्स्ट ओके नाउ विल पुट द वैल्यू राइट हेयर सो दैट विल गेट द प्लेन डेंसिटी फॉर वन 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 प्लेन इन टर्म्स ऑफ अकोटॉमिक रेडियस एंड इट इज सिक्सटीन आर स्क्वेयर एंड थ्री कम्स अब थ्री बाई अंडर रूट थ्री इज अंडर रूट थ्री बाई सिक्सटीन आर स्क्वेयर by following the similar procedure as i told earlier it's 3 to the power 1 by 3 to the power 1 by 2 it comes in the above numerators exponent to be negative and what you will get so it's 3 to the power 1 by 2 and so it's 3 to the power 1 by 2 and that's how i wrote under root 3 here so this is the planar density in terms of atomic radius this is the planar density in terms of our, um lattice parameter for 1 1 1 plane okay so in this way we have found the planar densities for uh, 1 1 1 1 1 0 and 1 0 0 planes for pcc structure video link for finding the planar density for fcc uh, planes is uh, available in the description box um, you can check it out or you can visit the solid state physics english version playlist uh, as i uh, separately made a playlist where english version uh, videos are added so you can quickly get them and uh, watch them if you want so i hope you understood it like share and subscribe Goodbye